Welcome, this is the homework solution for the sequence of 1.2 for the MVP. Here we have the ready problem. Given that the function of n is equal to 8n minus 3 and g of n is equal to 3n minus 10, evaluate the following function with the indicated values. This is your first function, which is going to be a function of n, and this is your second value, which is also going to be a function of n, but that is the g function. These are two different functions, and depending on which one it asks for, we're going to use. Number one, it says the function of 5, f of 5, right? So we're using the f function here, and we're going to plug in 5 here for n. So that's why here you have the f function, and I'm going to plug in the value of 5. I simplify. 8 times 5 is... 40 minus 3 is 37. Notice that this is read a function of 5. So that means if you plug in 5 into this equation, you get this answer. That is what the function notation means. Next, uh, g of 5 is equal to 3 times 5 minus 10 because, again, you're plugging 5 here into the g value here, okay? So, let me just write this so you can see. This is, right, and if you simplify, that is equal to 5. This is if you plug in 5 for g of n, good? All right, moving forward, I'm just going to show you the answer. Uh, f f the function of negative 4 um, is equal to negative 35 after you simplify uh, the g function of negative 4 when you plug that in that is equal to negative 22 function of 0 is equal to negative 3 oops this should be 0 here right this should be 0 uh, the g function of 0 that is going to equal to negative 10 look how this answer which is going to be red and this is going to be blue. Notice how they're different values because again you're plugging into different functions here. So when you plug in 0 into the f function that equals to negative 3 but if you plug in 0 into the g function you get negative 10. 7 plug in 1 into the f function you get negative 7 plug in 0 into the g f is that right? Plug in 0 into the g function you get negative 7. Oh, this should be 1, yep. Okay. Right, 3, yep, negative 7. All right, there you go. Next one. They're going to say complete each table by looking at the pattern. Here you go. Here's the first one. The It goes from 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 96, then 1, 92. Okay, I think this is what you had to fill in here. Right, the values are doubling each time. Next one, those are the four. Here, you notice that you are decreasing 16 for each term. Let me show you if you need to see. Okay, right, 50 subtract 66 equals to negative 16. Right, 34 minus 50, that's going to equal to negative 6. Right, that is how I am proving the value is decreasing f by 16 for each term. Okay, from here to here to here to here. Okay, it should be reducing in value. 11. Very beautiful uh, series here. It goes from 160 to 80, 40, 20, 10, 5, 2.5, 1.25. The value is divided, dividing by 2 for each term. So uh, 160 divided by 2 is 80, then it goes to 40, 20, 10, 5, 2.5, then 1.25, okay? It is dividing by 2 for each term, uh, 12, right? Here the value is going from negative 9 to negative 2 to 5 to 12, okay? I can show this if you would like to see it, okay? Negative 2, subtract negative 9 that is going to be a positive 7 likewise 5 minus negative 2 that is also going to be 7 12 minus 5 is also going to be 7 okay there you go that is why the value is increasing by 7 for each term you should see that the series the values are increasing now we have the set part 
In the picture below, each square represents one tile. You have the image here. They're asking you to draw step four and step five. So step four, I added a block to each side, so each um, leg. Okay, one on the uh, left side, one on the top, and one on the right. You could note that with the red. Step five, okay, I use the prior image, and I just add one more block to the left, to the top, and to the right tower, noted in orange. Okay, so in total, how many do I have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Right? So the students in each class were asked to find the number of tiles in the figure by describing how they saw the pattern of tiles change at each step. Match each student's ways of describing the pattern with the appropriate equation below. Note that S represents the step and N represents the number of tiles. So I matched up C with 14 because um, Dan explains that the middle tower is always the same as the step number. He pointed out that two arms on each side of the tower contains one less block. So do you see the the contain one less block? That is the S minus one part. Okay? And the uh, two arms on each side of the tower is the S part before the this stuff. Okay, there you go, before this part. Good? So that is how I note that. Uh, B. Here, Sally can, um, counts the number of tiles for each step and made a table. She explaining the number of tiles in each way. Three times the step minus two. So three times, that's three times S. So let me just write that out for you. So three times... means 3s and <laughs> minus 2 means <laughs> minus 2 right exactly the way that is and last one I think I deleted this to make room hold on yep last one the only one I have left here is a here what I did is you have your step value you just plug it in here so you plug in the values you plug in one so let me just show you the first one. So I think you have n equals to n equals to 2s minus 1 plus s minus 1. So you plug that in. Oops. I think you get 2 plug in 1 here plus 2 minus 1, which should simplify, right? This becomes 2 minus 1, so this becomes 1. No, this becomes, oh, oh this becomes 1, sorry. This becomes 0, right? 1 minus 1 becomes 0. 2 minus 1 becomes 1. Boom, that matches perfectly, okay? So just plug it in. Just plug in the values to see, to see if it works or not. Makes your life easier. Next, they say write each expression using an exponent, okay? So here, you have 6 times 6 times 6 times 6 times 6. 6 is your base, okay? Let me just give you the format for the exponent. It looks like something like this. This is the base. And this is the how many times the number is being multiplied. Multiplied by, okay? In our case, 6 is being multiplied 6 times. In this case, 4 is being multiplied 3 times, so 4 to the power of 3. 15 is being multiplied 4 times, 1, 2, 3, 4, so you said 15 to the power of 4. And here, 1 third is being multiplied twice, so you say 1 third to the power of 2, or you could say 1 third squared. Okay, here, 7 is being multiplied by 1, so that is just 7. 3 squared, here, I th here they ask us to evaluate. 3 squared is 9, right? You plug that into a calculator. 5 third is equal to 125. 10 to the power of 4, 4 zeros, okay? 25, 7, 7 um, times 2 to the third power. This, remember, the exponent goes first, so it's 7 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, which is equal to, which is equal to 56. 8, 10 times 8 squared, which is 624, because you have to do this part first. Eight, 8 squared becomes 8 squared becomes 64. Next, 3 
times 5 to the power of 4. You have to do 5 to the power of 4 first. 28, 1 third, 1 half to the power of 3, right? 1 half times 1 half times 1 half does not equal to 56. Hold on, let me check my work here. I think I wrote that one wrong. Let's look at 28 really quick. Let me pull up my paper really quick. Something's wrong here. Yes, that is 28. 16 times 1 half. That equals to 56. Let's just double check that. I want to make sure that's correct for you before you're... Mm. Hold on. This This doesn't look right. I got two here. Let's see. Let's see. Here, let me just bring this problem down real quick. Okay. This. Should be expanded to look like this. Okay. What this, what the. It should have been 16 parentheses. One half times or the x times one half times one half. Okay. Oop. That's what that should mean. If I simplify this, this should be one half times one half times one half. Okay. That should be one eighth. So this should be one eighth. Sixteen times one eighth should be two. So this should be two. So the answer here should have been two. Yes, it should not have been fifty six. Yeah, that's correct. All right. I think the other answers are correct. Yep. There you go. That is your homework solution. Remember, if it doesn't make sense, plug into your calculator or do it by hand, okay? Never do it once in your mind. Always try to double check with work by writing it out yourself, okay? There you go. Those are the homework